Have you ever set up a HomeKit automation only for it to fail completely? Miss trigger devices, it's unresponsive, or perhaps geofencing that just doesn't work? Let's fix that today and make your automations bulletproof. When an automation fails, it's frustrating and breaks trust in your smart home setup. A light that never turns on, a thermostat that misses the schedule, or an automation that works sometimes, but not every time. These are problems that make HomeKit feel unreliable. But the good news, most issues have very simple fixes, if you know where to look. Before you get started, you want to make sure you cover the bases. Check that the accessory is plugged in or that it's charged. Dead batteries are sneaky culprits. Next thing you'll want to do is confirm your Wi-Fi or thread connections. If the device has thread, make sure there's a router nearby. If Wi-Fi, check and make sure the signal strength is strong. A weak signal can cause the infamous no response message. The other thing that you'll want to check is Bluetooth. Some devices rely on it to complete the setup or for overall control. Popping over into the home app, you wanna make sure the device says connected. If it does not, that's a red flag and that's where we wanna start troubleshooting. Other things that you wanna keep in mind is your hub. If it's an Apple TV or a HomePod, make sure that it's turned on and it's signed into iCloud and on the same network as your device. And the last thing we're gonna check for up front is potentially any kind of blockers. So VPN, firewalls, or any special Wi-Fi settings can also interfere with HomeKit and HomeKit traffic and making it where your devices cannot respond. First things first, there's not gonna be a one size fits all as far as troubleshooting. Different automations will fail for various reasons. Time-based automations, the first thing you wanna do is check your device's clock and make sure it's configured to the right time zone. Wrong time zone or schedule mismatches can cause some hangups. You also wanna double check to see if you have the 24 hour time zone enabled or 12 hour. These are all things that can throw off your automation timing. For something like sunrise or sunset, these are all reliant on location. You wanna make sure your home has access to your location services and you wanna test your offset. In some instances, you may wanna do it 15 minutes before sunset to make sure things are working appropriately. For people arrival slash departure triggers, location services must be set to always within the home app. And remember, if there's more than one person in your home, you have to make sure you check that the automation is set to anyone arrives or first person arrives. That small detail makes a big difference as far as how that automation is gonna trigger for you. For automations that are triggered by motion or other sensors, you wanna start with the batteries. Low power can cause delays or missed triggers. You also wanna consider device placement. A motion sensor aimed poorly or too far away from the hub can fail silently. Another thing that can lead to failure with automations within your smart home is outdated firmware. You wanna open the manufacturer's app and look for any updates. Vendors often fix bugs long before Apple does, so you wanna make sure that you go in and check with the actual manufacturer. If a device doesn't respond, even on its own, then that's your clue to reset it through that app, and you may have to re-add it to HomeKit to save some time and confusion. It's very important to remember that HomeKit depends on a hub. If your HomePod or Apple TV is offline or just having general issues, it's a good chance your automations aren't gonna work. So a simple thing would be unplug it, wait 30 seconds to a minute, and then plug the device back in. At this time, you may also wanna reset any third-party bridges you might have. So an example would be a Hue bridge or a Lutron bridge. If those devices are failing, this is now a good time to reset those as well. If nothing else works, use the clean slate method. Remove the device from Apple Home. Factory reset it with the vendor's instructions. Re-add that device. And yes, it's extra work, but this solves a lot of problems involved with syncing that the quick fixes just can't do. Okay, but what if you're still stuck at this point? Now you wanna go ahead and do the big three, which involves rebooting your hub, reboot your accessories, as well as recreate the automation from scratch. It's not fun, but it's often the fastest way to wipe away any hidden glitches that still might be out there that you're unaware of. Okay, so with that, which HomeKit issue frustrates you the most? Drop it in the comments. I'd love to hear what issues you guys may be struggling with that I can help you out with in a future video. And if you're just getting started, make sure you check out my beginner automation guide linked right here. And coming up next, I'll be sharing my six month review of the Akara U200 Smart Lock. You've been thinking about adding a smart lock to your Apple Home setup. You'll want to make sure you don't miss that one. Until next time.